Discovering the Saginaw, Michigan Dragonstone and Michigan Epigee Stone by Dennis M. Morrison. The Native American Indians who inhabited the ancient woodlands of Michigan had a most interesting concept of spirituality. They believed that everything, including inanimate objects, had a spirit. They communicated with these spirits and respected them, especially the spirits who dwelt in rocks and stones. Near Hubbard Lake in northern Michigan, in times past, were some rather amazing shaped stones, and the Indians are said to have left offerings for the spirits of those stones when passing them. Frequently it would be tobacco. Usually, shaped stones did not go unnoticed by them, and because of that, I pay close attention to shaped stones when I find them on my various expeditions. Here I'm not talking about a stone shaped by the hand of man, rather a completely the design of God's natural world, and some of these are quite amazing, like the two I have to show you here today. First is what I call the Saginaw, Michigan Dragonstone. Any Native American of times past would have found this to be quite a revered piece and would have had great significance to them because of what it resembles. I call this the Saginaw, Michigan Dragonstone. Um, I found it on the banks of the Saginaw River quite near the city itself. Also in form, it looks very much um, like the profile of a dragon with head, um, um, front legs and, and long tail, and an eye exactly where it should be. <clears throat> However, in the Algonquin mythology of this area was a spiritual entity known as Mishipishu. Now, Mishipishu was a great and terrible mountain lion that lived beneath the waters of the Great Lakes. In fact, uh, depictions of him can be seen at the Sanilac petroglyphs and the Ontario petroglyphs and on the Nabkauzelan discs from the Thunder Bay area in Alpena, Michigan. The odd thing is, this spiritual mountain lion does not look like a mountain lion at all, but as you can see from the pictures that I'm showing you, it much more closely resembles a dragon. Now, these depictions are also quite similar to the Saginaw, Michigan Dragonstone. While the Saginaw Stone may or may not have a spirit, depending on how you believe, this would not have been seen by the ancient Native Americans because it would not have been here when they were here. You see it as a, a relative newcomer on the scene. This actually hails from around 1890 to 1910 and is a natural flow of material that was made at a foundry in operation here in Saginaw around that time. However, for all intent and purposes, this is a good representation of a dragon, or more to the point, Mishipishu. There is a second stone on the, in this display, which is not uh, from the foundry site, but was found here in Saginaw nonetheless. It looks just like the lower peninsula of Michigan. This is its natural shape, and again, it was not crafted by ancient man, uh, but it would have been a contemporary of his. The stone looks like petrified wood, but it's not. It also very closely resembles Native American pottery, but again, it is not. I'm not sure what type of stone this is, but it does display signs of having been exposed to a high degree of heat. The Michigan stone was discovered near, but not in, the Shiawassee Wildlife Preserve here in Saginaw. Being that shale abounds there, and this has some shale-like qualities, I believe it may be a vitrified type of red shale. Rocks and stones which resemble other things make fascinating collectibles in and of themselves. In my collection, I have one that looks for all intents and purposes like a human brain, and it's about the size that a child's uh, brain might be. I actually dug this out of the backyard at uh, 1015 Stevens here in Saginaw. It is, uh, has iron in it as it has a, uh, a rusty look to it, a most fascinating piece indeed. And another I have is a hard redstone which looks just like a fossilized baby booty. And still another, a shell concretion which strongly resembles the Algonquin entity Anamiki, or their great protector, the Thunderbird spirit. It, it, has, it looks like his head and profile, uh, judging by representations I've seen of Anamiki on the Nabkau zone discs, again mentioned earlier, from Alpina. These pieces formed in nature by the power of God put, um, put there are quite amazing indeed and deserve to be a part of your collection when you happen across them. Remember to treat them with, the, with respect though, because if the Algonquin people are correct, each has a unique and very special spirit of its own.
By the way, if you have any comments about um, the stones that I'm showing you, please, please take time to write and share your ideas with us. Thanks for listening.